43 years after his death, Darwin was in the headlines all across America. They called it the Scopes Monkey Trial. Dateline, Dayton, Tennessee, July 11th, 1925. In a moment, the story. Young John Scopes was charged with teaching evolution in his public school classroom. Perennial presidential candidate William Jennings Bryan rose from his sickbed to rally the prosecution. Defending Scopes was the equally famous Clarence Darrow. On the day of the trial, a full house of avid spectators from all over the nation filed in to hear the debate. The issue was no longer the innocence or guilt of Scopes, but rather the final death struggle between two basic human philosophies, fundamentalism versus modernism. In the end, Scopes was found guilty and fined a hundred dollars. The verdict was overturned on a technicality, but the law stayed on the books in Tennessee until 1967. The Scopes trial was just as farcical as, as some of the trials today in which uh, teachers are ordered not to teach the creation model. A teacher should be allowed to teach any and all perspectives of truth. It's been our experience that when we do that openly and fairly, creation wins hands down. That people would prefer miracles to a simple natural law puzzles some researchers and angers others. That 47 percent of the American population doesn't believe in evolution is a very frightening statistic. It's frightening from uh, an educator's point of view because it denies the basic unifying principle of biology, which is, as, uh, to paraphrase it, uh, nothing in, uh, in biology makes sense except from an evolutionary perspective. Darwinism has more than its fair share of skepticism, and it's rather hard to see why that should be. Part of the problem is that it's simply, people are simply ignorant of it. I mean, it's an astonishing thing, but it's true about our educational system, that we, we teach children just about everything except this really certain fact that we now know, which is, which is why we exist. I believe that there is no other explanation for the kind of elegant, apparently designed complexity that we call life, that indeed defines life. Darwin was careful to suggest that a creator might have started the whole process, breathing life into the first organisms. But the simple fact is, God wasn't absolutely necessary in a Darwinian universe. Supernatural intervention was replaced by natural selection. It was perhaps a more logical world. It was certainly lonelier.